Hello, this is Darren Pulsifer, Chief Solution Architect of Public Sector at Intel. And welcome to Embracing Digital Transformation, where we investigate effective change leveraging people, process, and technology. On today's episode, we're going to talk about three practical use cases of Optane Persistent Memory with Memberge. Today's show, we have the CEO of Memberge, Charles Fan, a, a, a friend of mine. We've talked to him on the show before. We've worked before. It's great to have you on the show, Charles. Hey, Darren. Thanks for having me. Great to be back. So we talked to you guys almost a year ago when Memverge first launched its first product. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sitting on, sitting on Intel's persistent memory, Optane persistent memory. It's been almost a year. How are things going, man? Things are going great. So we shipped uh, the first version of our software in September last year. And despite uh, the pandemic, which certainly slowed down, you know, the education of brand new technology to the customers, that we do have a number of customers using our technology with Optane persistent memory. And we are seeing a good pattern emerging in terms of what type of use cases they are using it for. So we are pretty excited about that. You know, it's amazing because you guys actually took a technology that Intel created and created a whole new way of doing compute with it that is really fundamentally changing not just one industry across several different industries, which we're going to talk about just three today that are profoundly shifted because of, because of your guys' software. Uh, that's right. But our software wouldn't be able to do this without the underlying hardware innovation. Uh, I think uh, persistent memory, in particular, obtaining persistent memory is a uh, breakthrough technology that uh, blurs the line between memory and storage. And that opened up many possibilities. And our software is trying to explore some of these possibilities and to be able to deliver something that was not before possible. So, so it's really an example of a hardware innovation and software innovation working hand in hand. Yeah, and I, I love how you said that because I see it as a fundamental change in the traditional uh, compute architecture that we've been doing for the last 50 years. That's right. Uh, I think the, you know, in your traditional von Neumann model, you have the computing unit, you have memory, you have uh, the IO device storage. Yeah. And whenever you are moving from one block to another block, that's where the bottleneck is. You know, there's a CPU memory block, the von Neumann block, then there is the memory storage uh, bottleneck, and, and that's the uh, storage IO bottleneck. And what we are doing together with Intel is really to remove this bottleneck between memory and storage by combining them into a single pool of resources. Um, boy, what are all those com computer science uh, college textbooks going to do? <laughs> They're going to have to be rewritten, I hope, right? Yeah, I mean, more, more, more business for the publishers. That's right. More, <laughs> see, you're creating a whole new industry on the side. <laughs> but that's so, not one of the three we're talking about. No, that's about not today. one of the three. Let's talk, <laughs> let's, let's talk about these use cases because this is these were really interesting when, when your team talked to me about them because I remember when this first came out, I was like, oh, I know where I want to use it. And I was going off in one direction. You guys are going off in another direction. And holy cow, you guys found some really cool use cases for this. Let's talk about those. Sounds good. So maybe let me uh, tell you what are the top three that we have identified. And then we can go one by one. We kind Sounds of go good. into more details of each of them. So the three use cases we have found. Number one, uh, we have been working with a number of cloud service providers. You know, as, as we know, the world is going to cloud. And the key uh, metric for a cloud service operator is how many VMs can they deliver uh, to their customers and at what cost. Uh, so this per VM cost is a key metric to measure the efficiency of a cloud service provider. And often the size of memory on the servers become the bottleneck of how many VMs you can allocate per server. Uh, therefore, that limits how low your price per VM can go to. Um, now we bring in obtain persistent memory and uh, memverge software. We can deliver larger amount of memory per server. 
therefore allocate more number of VMs, therefore the per VM cost become lower. That increase the competitiveness and increase the margin uh, for the cloud service providers. Well, so this is the first use case. Yeah, so this is an interesting use case because in some cases you're talking two to three X cheaper per, right. per VM. Right. Um, especially with Memverge because Memverge uses all the memory, not just the, the persistent memory with the DRAM cache. Right. You use all the memory right. uh, for all those, all those VMs. That's exactly right. So just to give you an example, uh, a typical server before Optane you know, could have 512 gig, 768 gig. That's a very big system with a good amount of memory. Um, and let's say if you need 32 gig per VM, you can have 20 VMs or 200 VMs or, or so on. Uh, uh, yeah, so if you, if you need 32 gig per VM, it's about uh, 20 some VMs you can have on that server. And that's guarded by the amount of memory you have. And now if we bring Obtain into the server, you could have three terabytes of Obtain in addition to that 512 or 768 gigabytes of DRAM. Uh, and with member software, we can deliver the combination of that capacity, three terabytes plus 768. So you get 3.7 terabytes of memory now available on your server. Uh, so if memory is your bottleneck, instead of 20 some VMs of 32 gig VMs, you could have a hundred, over a hundred uh, VMs. So, so, so therefore the per VM cost go down really, you know, three times. Uh, the server will be a little bit more expensive, but you get five times more VMs. Uh, so the per VM cost could be three times cheaper. And, and that really increased the competitiveness of, uh, of the cloud service provider. All right, that way, I mean, so, that could also be used in my own data center as well. If I want to do this on-prem, yes. I could do the same thing, right? I, exactly. I want to compact more VMs. And we also, I, I know we ran some tests with uh, your team around over-provisioning memory. Yeah. And we found that we can do that really easily because most of those VMs are sitting idle. So right. even over-provisioning them, I'm not going to take a hit in performance. And I can even squeeze out probably another... 20 to 30 uh, percent, which is quite incredible when you think about it. That's right. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, public cloud is where we're starting with. This certainly is applicable to private cloud and your own data center. Uh, and but with public cloud, this is their bottom line. And, and oh yeah, the, yeah, they, 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 they squeeze the every right, every penny right. out so, of every uh, instance. So, so so this become a very strong use case uh, for us and for Intel and for them. Great. Okay. What about the next one? What about the next okay. use case? Now the second one, uh, we have been working with uh, financial customers actually since the beginning, probably the last time we talked, we talked about yeah. some of the, these financial customers, stock exchanges, banks, uh, the, the, the mutual funds, hedge funds, and et cetera. And uh, they use a lot of in-memory databases and in-memory applications. Uh, some of them homegrown, some of them third party. And there is a problem with these in-memory applications. Number one, memory is not big enough. You know, we already know we we do big memory solutions, so there must be a fit. We can make the memory bigger, so they can have more instances, bigger instances per server. But also, uh, these uh, in-memory databases sometimes have availability challenges. Uh, that's because their data are not being persisted to the storage all the time. The data during the trading day are usually just in memory. Now, if God forbid you have a, a crash, uh, then you lose all your data, uh, all the interday data in memory will be lost. And uh, it is catastrophic. You either lose those data, or e even if you have logged all your transactions, you will need to replay the log to recover the database. That often takes many minutes or even hours to recover a database from a crash. And so what we offer, in addition to offering bigger memory size, is we offering a new data service that's called in-memory snapshot that we can persist the database state onto obtain persistent memory. Uh, it's much faster than persisting it onto storage. And therefore, if you crash, you still have the data, the last snapshot 
captured on persistent memory and you can recover from that and that become a much faster you know much uh, less rto uh, so, than, so how, uh, how how much day. faster are we talking let's say my machine reboots okay yeah. and i and i come back up how much faster because before you were talking hours to replay right. the journaling logs. So now the reboot plus recovery will be like a minute or two. So you can basically Whoa. reduce it from an hour or two to a minute or two, uh, you know, during these uh, reboot. So uh, we're, we're talking 60 to 100x performance right. improvement. Exactly, uh, almost two orders of magnitude uh, improvement in terms of- All right, work. so you, you've hit two major things that most CIOs worry about, cost right. and reliability, That's right. right? Because that that keeps my systems up for um, even if I do have a crash, it, it comes up faster, right? That's so right. that's that's, right. that's big. All right, so and that, that's huge. That, that, that's a good segue uh, yeah. into the third use case because uh, that's going to give you performance and productivity. And I think you know, as a CIO, you care about cost, you care about reliability, availability, and you care about ultimately the productivity of your team, uh, how fast. You know, you, you know, the whole purpose of IT is to increase productivity of the workforce. And how can, how can you build a foundation, build a tool set, allow your employees, the creative minds to work on things faster. And that's a good segue into the third use case um, th that we have actually found a number of uh, users in the genomics, uh, bioinformatics area. Uh, are using the combination of uh, Intel Optane memory and Memverge software to underlie their multi-stage data analytics workflow. And with that, uh, number one, you know, again, we deliver bigger memory so that you can have more parallelism of your pipelining uh, uh, and processing. So, so the whole thing can be faster. Uh, but also our snapshot uh, becomes handy here as well. Uh, the reason is with these type of jobs, uh, let's say they are doing a cancer research or they are doing some COVID research uh, and they need to do all these analytics on these uh, many DNA, RNA sequences and they need to go through like 11 or 20 or 50 stages of processing. And it takes, each stage will take from minutes to hours. And after each stage, they need to take a checkpoint of the, the state uh, of that intermediate computation results for a couple of reasons. One is sometimes you need to roll back and rerun it to just verify you can reproduce the results. Uh, secondly, uh, sometimes they want to modify some data and, and then compare, do some, they call what if analysis to compare how they will differ if you make change of some parameter or some sequences and, and to see how the results will differ. And how they do it today is they would take these checkpoints and save that state onto storage. And this takes anywhere between five minutes to like 30 minutes uh, for them to do these after each stage to do, do these IOs. And these IOs turns out in many cases to be more time consuming than the compute itself. Oh, it wow. is a compute intensive. So if they use like 24 hours to do the job, they could use eight hours and compute, 16 hours just doing these IO jobs uh, to saving those intermediate state. And so you can probably guess how, how we can serve them is that instead of doing IO, what we do is we use snapshot. So after each stage, they just take the snapshot and capture that on the obtained persistent memory and they keep running. So instead of 16 hours of IO, now these snapshots take, uh, you know, total like a single minute. So essentially you completely, almost completely eliminate the, what I, they call I, the IO you, you know what, this is opening up a whole bunch of workloads that I, I used to run a lot of workloads in HPC clusters, right? Right. Um, even te I, I'm thinking testing software, testing hardware. I mean, the, the list goes on and on that you could, I don't have to store this out to out, out to a drive. I just take a snapshot of the memory and move right. it to the next phase. Right. It's like the new way of doing I.O. You don't need to do the, uh, you know, uh, serialization, deserialization, open the file, read and write and doing all that, you know, block access. All you have to do is just take a snapshot. 
and 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 that just Man, completely uh, rewrite the rules. Uh, of and and th this one's probably the the one that's leaning more towards the new way of computing more than anything. That's right. Right. Because before, right. why do we have hard drives? Because I want to save something so I can look at it later or use it later. You're now using the persistent memory to just snapshot it and that's, it's there. That's right. That's now, right. isn't this going to take a ton of memory? I mean, uh, come on, Charles. Yeah. I, I only have what, let, let's say I load a machine all the way up, our brand new Ice Lake machine yeah. with your stuff, two sockets. I'm, I'm getting probably seven or eight terabytes. Yeah, yeah. Right in that yeah, range, yeah. seven or eight terabytes fully yeah, loaded. Yeah. yeah. My, I, if I'm running these stages through, I'm generating data as I go through. I'm taking snapshots. I'm gonna, I'm gonna exhaust all that persistent memory. Right. So uh, you are right, and uh, there are three answers uh, to your question, and this is a, a important question. Uh, number one, you know, for sure, the memory is bigger than before. Uh, so just the combination of pain and DRAM offers a bigger memory pool. And so that's good. And that's going to keep increasing as Intel continues to innovate, increase the density. Of and, and we will, we'll, we'll make, um, yes, we'll make exactly. more. <laughs> so, but that certainly does not fully answer your question. So, uh, so we are looking at how we can optimize this from software perspective. And we included two features. Uh, the first feature is really the key IP that we have. The reason we call this snapshot rather than checkpointing is that we can do this periodically, repeatedly without creating full copies of the memory state. So what we do is we do a natural dedupe between the subsequent snapshots nice. where only capture the changed pages so that the ex, you know, extra usage of memory can be minimized. So if you take 10 snapshots, you do not use 10x the memory. In fact, if you do not change your memory, you just use one X of memory. You have no extra use of memory. We only capture the changed pages. Uh, so, okay, that's good. So that's good. That's going to help me out quite a bit. Right, right. So that's uh, really the key thing, how we can make the memory usage capacity-wise to be efficient. And then we add another capability uh, is that if you do these subsequent snapshots, we can keep up to 256 layers of snapshots in memory. But at the same time, we allow you to, uh, we call export or, or move those snapshots off memory to some storage service or storage systems that you have. So, uh, so we so are not- I could do that out of band of mine. You can do that out of band in the background without impacting your, uh, without interrupting or impacting your uh, running application. So, well, well that, that's super yeah. cool because I can totally see me um, putting a workload together that says, run this workload in step one, start offloading at the same time, move to step two. And right. even though the offloading is happening in parallel, it's not interrupting the CPU, the exactly. CPU state. Exactly. Yep. That's slick. That is yeah. super slick. Um, right. So, so I think our customers are really enjoying this. Um, and, and, and essentially we are creating a, I call it a, a memory DVR. So, you know, before your application can only run forward. <laughs> you cannot That's right. Now it. I can run forward and backward. And right. Now you can roll back. You, you can do all that almost instantly. So, so, so this going to give you a new uh, experience. I Just think like I, my, my crazy TV. brain is thinking of a new programming paradigm. Um, <laughs> That's right. I just have a state. I just have one big state machine that just cycles through. I mean, the, I can move back and forth in memory. That's so. That's so cool. Right. Right. So the genomics is just the first example of this. There are probably other workloads that can benefit from this. But you know, we are a startup, so we are starting narrow. So we are focusing on these three areas: cloud service provider, financial, in-memory applications, and genomics, and and related data science kind of pipeline jobs, and to just prove out the power of the combined combination between obtain persistent memory and memory software. Um, great, great story. I, I, think, I think you guys are right at the tip of the spear of this whole digital transformation. Um, I can't wait. My, my brain's going crazy on the things I can now do or possibly do. Um, we'll have to talk offline. Maybe we'll, <laughs> we'll yeah. have to come up with 
you, you'll, you'll say, Darren, yeah, that'd be great. I'm a startup. I, I don't have, you know, a thousand people to throw at problems. So yeah, yeah, we, we are uh, learning every day as well, working with customers. I hope I'll be able to come back, uh, you know, in a few months and maybe uh, tell you more customer stories. How Absol our absolutely. Technology is being used. Hey, thank, thanks for coming on the show today, Charles. And uh, good luck with, with uh, your endeavor with Memverge. Oh, my pleasure. And uh, thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to Embracing Digital Transformation today. If you liked our episode, go ahead and give us five stars on your favorite podcast or video streaming site. You can also find out more on embracingdigital.com. Until next time, keep moving forward and do something wonderful.